Greetings family and friends. This is your boy Kali Karis and I'm back with another DIY project. This is a whole home generator that will power the entire home in the event of a power outage. Initially I wanted to purchase a Generac generator. However, the one that I was interested in being that it was capable of powering the entire home was significantly expensive. For example, if I were to contact my local power company to acquire one of these Generac generators, it would cost me approximately maybe between $13,000 to $14,000. And being that I have a background in electrical engineering technology, I decided that it would be more cost effective for me to design and build my own generator. The first thing I did, I jumped on YouTube, I looked at a few other designs and then I started formulating my plan and putting my design together. And this is what I came up with. The big ticket item for this project was the Westinghouse Portable Generator, which I purchased for approximately $1,250 plus tax. And if I had to guesstimate a total cost, which includes parts and supplies, permitting, etc., I would say it's closer to $2,500. For the enclosure, I went with a 160 gallon galvanized steel outdoor patio storage. However, most of the other DIY designs I saw throughout the internet they use a plastic storage shed which I'm not a fan of. I don't like the aesthetics of it and I don't like the way it looks. And by me using the galvanized steel, I no longer have a concern of the enclosure catching on fire. I also installed a piece of concrete board and I mounted all of my electronic components on it. The reason I use the concrete board over wood is because concrete board offers a higher level of heat resistance. Since I'm using a portable generator, which is not designed for being in an enclosure, I wanted to create an airflow system. On one end, I installed an intake vent, and on the other end, I installed an exhaust fan. The intake vent ensures a steady supply of fresh air to the engine and also for cooling. On the opposite end is the exhaust fan, which expels hot air and carbon monoxide. The entire airflow system is controlled by an automatic transfer switch which controls which power source is used to energize the exhaust fan. And how this works is that we have two inputs. One is a commercial input coming from the house giving you commercial power. And the other input comes from one of the available output ports on the generator which is generally 120 volts. Instead of running the output from the automatic transfer switch directly to the fan, I install an outlet box to keep all my devices powered when the generator is on. The device above the transfer switch is the controller for the exhaust fan. You will program the fan to turn on based on whatever environmental condition you select. I have mine set to activate whenever the temperature sensor detects 95 degrees. And with the generator running, it doesn't take long to reach that temperature. And as you can see, the current temperature within the enclosure is 69 degrees. And if you pay close attention, you will notice that the fan is not running and that's because the temperature within the enclosure is below the 95 degree threshold. For this very reason, I incorporated the transfer switch because I live in Florida and wanted to regulate the temperature and humidity in the enclosure, even when the generator is not operational. Hence, the need for the commercial power I installed entering the system. Uh, this particular fan system has a humidity sensor which is important to me because I want to regulate the humidity within the enclosure. I don't want it to become so humid that the generator and the other devices start to corrode. The little white device below the transfer switch is a Govi Smart temperature and humidity sensor that I can monitor on my phone or using Alexa. Alexa, what's the generator temperature? The generator temperature is 66.2 degrees. The smart temperature and humidity sensor I just showed you actually comes in two parts. It has a hub and this here is the sensor. The sensor uses two AAA batteries and to avoid frequent battery replacements, I use a battery emulator, which I connected to the outlet using an iPhone charger cube. I also installed an outlet for the utility power entering the enclosure with two items plugged into it. As mentioned earlier, I installed commercial power to operate the exhaust fan via the automatic transfer switch. Additionally, the utility power provides a constant DC voltage to the generator battery, as the generator came with its own battery charger that connects directly to the front of the control panel. This setup allows me to maintain a consistent battery charge. That pretty much sums up the airflow setup and the smart monitoring features. 
In addition to the exhaust fan, I run a pipe from the generator exhaust to an exhaust silencer, which I believe functions like a muffler. As you can see, I'm currently wrapping it with a fiberglass exhaust wrap because this pipe gets extremely hot. Initially, I didn't think it would be an issue since the pipe is inside the enclosure, but I learned the hard way when I accidentally touched it while the generator was running. I, it wasn't pleasant. I used black iron pipe because I had some left over from another project. Otherwise, I would have just used galvanized steel, mainly to avoid corrosion. I also encountered some difficulties connecting the pipe from the generator exhaust because the surface for attaching the exhaust adapter didn't sit flat. To seal the connection, I had to use a silicon gasket. This is crucial because this generator has a built-in carbon monoxide sensor that shuts off the unit if it detects carbon monoxide. Since I have the exhaust fan set to turn on at 95 degrees, the fan will not activate in time to clear the enclosure as it takes a while to reach that temperature. For now, the silicon gasket seems to be holding up. Time will tell. I am using the generator's 50 amp output to power the house. Initially, I planned to use a generator cable to connect the generator's output to the inlet box. However, I wanted to avoid having to enter the enclosure every time I needed to connect the cable. My solution was to install an RV power outlet, allowing a direct connection to the generator's 50 amp output. Ultimately, I decided to hardwire the generator directly to the inlet box while keeping the RV power output as a backup option for situations where using the generator cable might be necessary. As you may have noticed, I also installed an access panel, drawing from years of experience in the electronics field. This allows for quick and easy access to perform certain maintenance tasks. If needed, I can also remove the entire front panel of the enclosure, which takes approximately 10 minutes. I install the 50 amp circuit leaving the enclosure into the inlet box. It then leaves the inlet box via one inch conduit. The conduit exits the inlet box and runs vertically along the exterior wall, entering the attic. Once inside, it travels horizontally along the framing members away from the enclosure. It then descends vertically down the wall and continues downward entering the main breaker panel. I installed a 50 amp 2 pole circuit breaker and integrated it with a generator safety interlock kit to prevent back feeding and ensure safe power transfer between the utility grid and the generator. The interlock kit prevents both the utility power and the generator circuit from being energized simultaneously. I would first need to turn off the 200 amp utility power before I can energize the 50 amp generator breaker. Now let me show you how I set up my fuel source. This generator can use three different fuels, gasoline, propane and natural gas. Since my home is equipped with centralized natural gas, I chose to go that route for convenience. However, since I'm not a licensed electrician or gas technician, I had to learn how to perform both tasks as it was required for me to obtain a permit and pass an inspection by the county. Fortunately, in the state of Florida, homeowners can apply for a permit called the Owner Builder Permit, which allows them to perform professional tasks on their own property. This is something I didn't know about before taking on this project. Anyways, to get the gas to the generator, I had to first tap into the existing gas piping at the meter. As you can see, the T-joint is pointing in the opposite direction of where I needed to go. But I didn't want to disassemble all the piping. Instead, I routed the pipe upwards to the desired direction and then back down into the ground. I used a gas piping system called IPS. In my county, the desired burial depth is 12 inches, but I went a bit beyond that and I buried mine at 19 inches. I also run mine inside a conduit for added protection, even though it wasn't required by the county. And if you look closely, you will see the fresh sod I laid near the wall where I run the IPS piping. IPS is essentially a yellow flexible plastic pipe that connects to meter risers at each end. As you can see at the enclosure, the riser come out of the ground and connect to CSST piping before entering the enclosure. I installed three shutoff points on the fuel system, one at the meter, one here, and one inside the enclosure for quick shutoff in case of an emergency. 
Lastly, I grounded the generator chassis to the ground by running an insulated grounding wire through plastic cable gland joints to exit the enclosure. The wire then ran horizontally along the wall, terminated at a grounding bridge, continued vertically down the conduit, and finally connected to an 8-foot grounding rod buried 12 inches deep. Initially, I had the grounding wire exiting through the same path as the fuel line, but I was concerned of the implications of running a grounding wire too close to the CSST gas line for obvious reasons. And there you have it, my DIY generator enclosure. Thank you for watching. If you're interested, feel free to check out my music. I'm also a reggae artist. I've listed all the items I've used to build the enclosure in the description. If I happen to miss anything, just leave a comment and I will make sure to add it.